Beautiful afternoon to where you might be watching us here on the losomews.com preview show. I am your host, Jose Contreras, recording this, starting off the show with your voice of Los Amigos, Mike Warner. Michael, how's uh, how's your week going? Oh, it's going fine so far, mate. Just uh gearing up again for another batch of double headers. But it's a it's a nice calm Thursday afternoon on Huntington at Huntington Beach. I had a six mile walk on the beach earlier today. Good. That sounds like a great way to decompress and recharge and get ready for this weekend of doubleheaders as we wrap up the year at Los Lomitos as far as calendar seasons go, both the daytime thoroughbred season and the nighttime year-round quarter horse and thoroughbred season. Uh, brief thoughts on last weekend uh, with a big, impressive win on Tracy and Shin V. He broke to the gate. He got bumped. It did not matter. He was just too good for them. Yeah, what a powerhouse. What a great effort. And, uh, the other horse to break through finished third, Optical yes. Illusion. Uh, so, so both horses put forward outstanding performances. This was the, the, the smallest margin of victory for Train Station V in his four appearances at Los Alamitos, but probably the most meritorious win. And uh, it was, well, history-making because he became the first horse to win both the Golden State Million Futurity and the Two Million as the fastest qualifier at each race. And uh, heartiest congratulations to Valeriano Racing Stable, Heath Taylor and Francisco Calderon, because as an owner-trainer jockey combination, they achieved uh, an incredible feat, winning the champion of champions with flashback and the two million futurity with train station. Uh, that's a feat that's only been accomplished once before, eight years ago by Jose Flores, uh, Cruz Mendez and S Corta K LLC. They swept both races as an owner trainer jockey combination, but it's no small feat. No. And I thought it was never going to be done again as far as that scenario. Uh, so kudos to them. Uh, great weekend for Valeriano, Keith Taylor, and Calderon, who uh, added to that uh, one season uh, record breaking earnings as a jockey. He already had broken it. He added a, a little bit of icing to the kink there, icing to the cake yeah. with the champ to Jimmy's and the two-minute fraternity. Now, what S quarter K does have is that they did it with half siblings, which I don't think that's ever going to be done because I'm a fearless hero and he's as far he's as far with siblings. So uh that ah, another, yeah. layer, another layer to that to that uh, scenario. But congrats to everybody. You mentioned um, of course, uh the winner, train station V, but also kudos to five bar supreme. It's quite a feat to finish second in a $2 million fraternity. Congrats to them from the rail. Um, yeah, and Lindolfo and Diaz also had the fourth horse. Uh, he yes. finished second and fourth with his two runners. Um, you know, he, he does a tremendous job, particularly with the juveniles. He seems to be so strong with the two-year-olds each season. But to end up second and fourth in the $2 million, that's really something to hang your hat on. And congrats to owner Jim Schlagel, the owner of uh, Optical Illusion, who was the other horse. That broke through the gate and ended up finishing a very good third. Uh, he stopped by the set before the show. Um, you know, he, he was uh, gracious enough to stop by, say hello, and he was pumped, pumped with the third place finish. Uh, after the after the race was run, he immediately came and tapped on the glass, and he had a big smile on his face, finishing third in that type of a race. Uh, it is a very, very important achievement. So, congrats to him. And you remember his- earlier in the year, Jose, that horse optical illusion had the outside gate in the yes. trial. And uh, almost snatched a hot dog out of a patron's hand. Yes. He came that wide. He was down the outside rail. It was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. lo- look at the maturity. Look at the evolution of this horse under Paul Jones's tutelage and uh, full marks to uh, a big and very talented horse who presumably will be a major factor in the three-year-old races. Yeah, let's see. Looking forward to how these two-year-olds mature heading into 2024 as they become Three-year-olds. Let's talk about the Saturday night quarter horse program, quarter horse and thoroughbred program we have for you on uh, on the nighttime here on Saturday. We got a nine race program. We have a pair of stakes to end the card. But first, let's go to where you're going to take us. Race number five, a quarter horse uh, maiden event. 
one of many excellent races on the undercard. Apart from those two stakes races in the late double, there's uh, there's a lot of talent in uh, many of the other horses, uh, many of the other races down the straightaway. Uh, this fifth race for two-year-olds at 300 yards is a case in point. Um, it, it's a deep field with horses, the top two in the wagering on the morning line, numbers one and three, coming out of Golden State Million and Two Million Futurity Trials with minor placings in each of those races. Relief Factor ran second in each of his trials, politically extolled V, third in each of his trials. And um, so th these are the types of horses that I'm going to try to beat and call me silly, but I'm off to the outside post position with an eight to one shot who's run only once. That is Freddie for owner Barry Woodhouse, bred by Fred Skane, said her more is a conditioner. You gave us the winner of that race, Cheater, as your play of the night in that preview. Cheater was impressive in that comeback effort. Freddie was a first time shotter in that race. Let's take a look at that event back on December 2nd. Freddie was in gate number five in his field of seven. You like Cheater this night, who proved to be the better horse on the outside. But let's focus on Freddie. Freddie was six to one, gate five here on December 2nd. Yes, uh, Cheetah went straight and uh, was far too good. Um, very nice horse. Uh, the horse in the sixth gate is Sasparilla. Now, watch Sasparilla float towards the inside. Freddie number five gets herded towards the inside by the lugging six horse. And I thought that his effort to finish third was quite good. Uh, he certainly did enough on debut uh, to think that he might be a horse worth following. And uh, he's got the outside gate at eight to one, which uh, is just appealing enough for me to give him a look here against obviously much better qualified opposition. Um, now, the bullet gate work, Jose, before he debuted on October 21st, I went back and took another look at that, and he was on the outside of two horses, and he broke perfectly straight. It was a very good-looking professional work. He drifted in slightly over the concluding stages, but the thing that I wanted to see was that he came out of the outside gate straight because uh, the last thing he can afford to do here on the outside against this opposition is to wander wide and just lose his path a little bit. So my hope mm -hmm. based on that gate work on October 21st uh, is that Freddie can show up and run a decent race for us at good odds. Uh, he's got some good morning activity. He's well-bred, plenty of upside off just the one start. And uh, while acknowledging how good Relief Factor and Politically Extol V have been in recent times, those races were at 400 yards. They each have to cut back significantly in distance. And, uh, you know, maybe that's maybe that's a negative for them. Perhaps it's not. But, uh, you know, they've been hard at work in, uh, in these futurity trials. And Freddie might just be the fresh horse on the scene. You're going to get a nice prize, that's for sure, based on the morning line. You're talking about a second-time starter that could obviously improve and looks like a runner that... At least in that effort, looked like uh, his mind is right. It's all about obviously showing that next step and improving second time out. Eight to one is a very attractive Mori line. And I think you're going to get a very fair price because the one and the three are going to take plenty of support based on those last two efforts they each uh, come out of. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, p p with the three horse p politically extolled V, I remember picking that horse on top in the consensus page in the program for the Golden State Million Futurity Trials. And he was beaten ahead at 10 to 1. And then the last race, his recovery after early trouble was excellent. So I, I, I genuinely am fearful of him. And even Goodbye Quickie, who's seven to two, third choice on Ed Burgard's morning line, was a nice effort last time from the rail draw. He finished well and galloped out very powerfully. So I'm not overlooking his chances either. Um, you know, so Freddie's in deep here. Uh, if he were four or five to one, we would not be having this conversation. It's just that he's eight to one from the outside gate with obviously some ability and some potential to take a step forward. 
a um, little, little bit fresher than the others maybe. So that, that's why I'm giving him a look here on the preview show. I like Freddie, Freddie on the outside. I like that uh, that eight to one shot you're taking, and that's going to be race number five in that night race. We're going to want to quickly just move ahead and talk about the two stakes events. Uh, the A Ransom will be race number eight, that 350 yard event, and then race number nine. And race number eight, by the way, features he judge and jury, the winner of the All American Futurity last year. He's two to one on the morning line, and then race number nine will be the Grade Three First Down Dash Handicap, which has a field of ten. Did you glance at those fields? Any brief thoughts on those fields at all? Oh, they're both very good races. He's Chickless has the rail in the uh, second last race. Yes. Uh, and and uh, he's judging juries on the far outside. They're the top two on Ed's morning line. And uh, they're both outstanding three-year-olds. Yeah, it's going to be um, a good lot, lot of depth in each of those fields. Um, in the ninth race... That horse, uh, Ella Venturero. Yes, um, I'm. In, I'm interested in him. I, I think he's got scope to to take a step forward coming into this race. Um, I just don't have his um, PPs in front of me, and what you're showing on the screen is impossible for me to read. Yes, on on my phone, and it's it's tiny. But uh, yeah. he, uh, he finished, he's, he's a horse second that to, uh, finished second sorry. to Ain't He Tempting, who Ain't He Tempting came back to win. Impressively in that trial next time out. So El Aventurero, second to Ahi Tenting, and then third to Jericho two starts ago. Oh, that's right. Yes, that was in a super derby trial. Yes. And uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's a couple of these performances earlier on uh, were were good. I, I, I don't think we've seen the best of El Aventurero. I'm interested to see what he can do on Saturday night. Yes. And uh, I... I'm going to go back to an old friend of ours. I think I'm going to go with Mahone's Magic in race number nine, the great three first down dash. He's a he's he's such an unlucky horse that uh, Mahone's Magic, I think, could provide some value in that nightcap. On I'd love to see him win. It, it's just yes. almost criminal that he hasn't won a race all season. And uh, it would be very fitting if he closed out the year with a win. Absolutely. Yes, so that's a quick, brief uh, look into some of the stakes events. And I've got a screenshot I want to show the viewers. And I got to take over the mic on Mike Corona's <laughs> booth. Uh, here is the tweet by Mike Corona. Quick screenshot. Uh, yes, I took over the, uh, the the microphone for a full post break. So thank you, Michael, for that. Oh, no worries at all. Uh, you spent the whole afternoon there on Sunday because you were Ed Burgart's handicapping guest before the afternoon card got underway. Paid me a visit in the booth, and uh, so we gave you a leg up into a post parade. The only thing I had not taken into consideration is that mm -hmm. it might throw a scare into people. I heard afterwards that there was minor panic from a, a few people that <laughs> that my voice might have given out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, uh, our track president, Miss Kathy Maji, I ran into her <laughs> after the, you know, in between, in between daytime and nighttime races, right? Uh, uh, you know, I, I was able to catch up with her and say hello. She was like, I immediately said, that's Jose. Did something happen to Michael? I got worried yeah. for a second. I was like, no, we're just having fun. I gave him a, a a minute or two break from the boys, and I took over the, the, the call. She's like, but I, I immediately knew it was you. So uh, I was worried for Michael. So we had a good laugh about it. So our track president did notice right away. A uh, big salute to Miss Kathy Manji. Um, she was, she, we had a good laugh about it. Good, good. I'm, I'm pleased it was a good laugh. <laughs> it was. It, it was a good laugh. Uh, all right, Michael. Uh, best of luck there with uh, Freddie in race number five. Uh, get ready because I believe we're going to have some very nice uh, contentious cards to add the weekend here with the doubleheader. So we need to save up that voice as much as we can. Yes. Sunday is going to be a little taxing from what I'm hearing. Uh, there's, there's no fields finalized yet, but... Uh, I'm bracing myself, mate. Yes. It should be good. You'll handle it. You got through the first weekend. Plenty, plenty more left in the tech. I know you will. Okay. Good on you. Have a great weekend. Have a good one. See you later. This December, Los Alamitos celebrates its biggest daytime thoroughbred meet of the year. Opening day is Friday, December 8th. The meet will have five stakes races, including three graded stakes events. The Starlet is set for Saturday, December 9th, and the Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 16th, plus the Bayacoa and two other stakes events headline the meet. 
and horse players. Our on-track live money handicapping contest is set for December 16th. It'll be a meet to remember this December at beautiful Los Alamitos. Welcome back here now to the program, joined by your Los Alamitos analyst, Christopher Waite. And uh, Chris and I will be on the FanDuel desk together in a couple of weeks, so tune in for that. We'll let you know when that turns out to be. In the meantime, Chris, uh, let's recap last week. Cohesive Cartel, your selection on the show, got a nice win. It looked very professional once again. Yes, yeah, so yeah. we're steadily improving. He was very impressive in breaking his mane. He was one left to give, and his nice size individual galloped out very, very well. And first time against winners, we thought he had a look on the outcome. And darn if he didn't break and won well and beat our second choice on the rail. So we got A B there on in that particular event last weekend. Yeah, nice winner, nice tab with that uh, selection there, a cohesive cartel. Uh, let's recap, Champion of Champions, of course, flashback on the rail. We knew he had that late kick a few years ago to finish second at Champion of Champions. Uh, he came back uh, sharper, stronger, and uh, really took down a very, very good quality field. Yeah, he broke broke relatively well and showed that big kick at the end. He got there a nice price and uh, was well meant and got the victory for uh, the same connections who came back and won the deuce on Sunday. Yes. Uh, a political pence uh, looked like a winner maybe way through the race, but he took an awkward stride, uh, really lost all action. He gave the race away. I think if he would have kept a straight path, he probably was going to win that race, given how, how strong he was looking. Monte Rosa did come back and post on his Facebook page that um, that a political pence was fine. Everything was fine with him. It was just a, a an awkward step. Uh, and he, he was, he was looking fine. He shared a video there on the, on his Facebook page. So, uh, a political fence uh, appeared to be coming out of the race in good order. Flashback, obviously, uh, was second to Pence a few years ago. Now he takes the crown in winning the grade one champion of champions, defeating him present in a very good quality feel behind them. Then the Connections did a double, a very rare double, but a very impressive double. They take down the champion of champions. They got train station B, the expected more line favorite in the big final. You still got to run the race. And just before the race went off, what does he do? He breaks through the gate. And you know, Chris, from all of our years watching races, quarter horse races, thoroughbred races, um, at the lowest levels, at the highest levels, it's very tough at any level for to break through the gate, especially quarter horses, because they want to go zero to 100 immediately at the moment the gates open. That's a lot of wasted energy. Not only wasted energy, you get all startled because you hit your nose in the front of the gate. A million things can go wrong. That happens to Trace HV. He reloads, breaks, gets bumped, and still wins fairly easily. What an impressive run by Trace HV. Yeah, of all the years I've been in this game, I've it's maybe one out of ten. I mean, maybe not even five percent could win after yeah. – Something like that. And uh, the, so far this season, I've seen two. One in Evangeline Downs about two weeks ago. It was our top choice. And then, of course, Train Station V breaks through the gate along with the horse that did come very optical losing, come back to run third. So that was a very impressive performance by him as well. And uh, he broke 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 okay. And bingo, bango, bongo, he still won and won rather nicely there, despite a big uh, effort by the, ra- the rail runner, who's our second choice, who caught a flyer from the rail. But uh, – he is something, something special. Yes, for sure. A graduate of the Los Amigos Equine Show, uh, bred by doctors. Wait, Los Amigos or Riedoso? Riedoso. Can't remember now. Yeah, it was Riedoso, 120,000. Yes, but bred by locally here by Dr. Steve Burns. Um, and what, what, a, what a specimen, what a talent. Train Station V uh, getting the job done for Valeriano Racing Stables and the 2 million. All right, let's talk about this Saturday night, Elosa. Mike Corona gave us, gave us a selection there for race number five. You're taking us even earlier. You're going to race number three. This is a very competitive allowance, so I'm looking forward to see, seeing who you like in this spot. Who do you like? Yeah, it's a closely matched affair, but I'm going to give an up-and-comer a horse. It's a nice-sized individual that's steadily improving. has been a, a horse to watch on my numbers in all three of his lifetime starts, including the debut back in early April. He is steadily improved and uh, ran very, very well in his last effort. Despite some trouble, he ran very strongly. He earned a big figure. I'm talking about Tabasco, just there for uh, Jose Nunez and E.G. High Desert Farms owner and breeder. All right, so he was uh, he took some money on debut back in April when he went three to one on that 220. Then he went to the bench. But you always knew there he had a very good workout workouts as early in the season. He came back. He got overlooked. He won at 22 to one as my longest of the night on October 8th. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't on track to really 
cash anything significantly on him. Uh, I was kicking myself. And then last time out, Chris, you probably could say that he lost this trial by breaking outwards at the start because he breaks cleanly and forwardly. He probably was uh, raced very easily on November 19th. Yeah, he got a little fraction gate. He broke slow out and brushed the side of the gate and lost over length and was slow in the stride and finished like a freight train on his own. And a very impressive performance versus some good runners. And uh, shortening up in distance is the only concern. But if he gets away clean, he's got a big look on my numbers. Yeah, watch it start on the outside. Tabasco Jess, right there, he kind of breaks outward and loses some momentum. And not only momentum, but also ground. Yeah, like I said, he broke a little, a little fracture. He's moving the gates open up, brushed the side of the gate a little bit. And lost over length and was a slow in the stride. But before the big run midway, and was finishing steadily under light pressure against a good group of runners and came up just a little bit short. If he'd have broke, he probably would have won that race. 9.83 was a come home time for Tabasco Jess. Remember, John ended up winning that race at a pretty decent price, but Tabasco Jess was the clear second choice that evening back on November 19. Now you're drawn in between a couple of runners. Do you think that might help him break a little bit straighter here? Yeah, I'm hoping so. He's drawn between runners, got no excuse. Uh, if he breaks clean and has a clear path, at least it's 350 yards. If it's 300, I, I, I'd be a little hesitant to give him a look. But this horse, like I said, was a minus worker prior debut back in April. Came back off the layoff. He was, and his, in the debut at 220, he broke very slow and was guzzled every step of the way and showed a good amount of run. He was a horse to watch off that. And we overlooked it. You didn't when he came back off the layoff back uh, back in October. And uh, he won rather handily. He came back in that trial and did have some trouble and finished pretty well versus Remember John. I do want to mention that Kicking Famous was actually my top pick last Sunday. Yeah, last Sunday in the Los Angeles Sumina Juvenile. So this, the race before the main two minute futurity, uh, Kicking Famous was my top pick. He was a late gate scratch. So it's late gate scratch of Kicking Famous in last Sunday's Juvenile. He enters here in race number, race number three. He's got gate five. AJ Shiny, who Tabasco just beat. In that, in that trial to start to go, he's in gate two. And then attacked, who has been kind of teetering and showing signs of kind of being being a good horse, draws the inside post. So it's, this is a very good very good competitive uh, allowance, part of the early pick four. Yeah, it certainly is. And KR Stingray, the horse lay outside, was our horse uh, that we liked as our preview show selection last time he ran in one. Rather nice, he gets the outside post. If he can run straight, he's got to look at the outcome as well. Yeah, so KR Stingray draws the outside post. That's going to be a very good competitive allowance. A race number three on Saturday night. And Chris is going with Tabasco Jess, who's 3-1 to one on Ed Burgard's morning. All right, Chris, we're going to wrap up here, though, not only the weekend of racing, but also the, the year-round calendar season here at Los Lomitos as the meet wraps up for the nighttime uh, on this Saturday, Sunday weekend at Los Al. The new, uh, the new uh, standings uh, completely clear out, and we begin a brand-new season uh, the week of the 30th and 31st right now, that's the tentative schedule. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a fun way to wrap up the weekend here. With not only the couple of sticks events, but also the so-called derby. Samuel Castellan, what else are you tackling here to, to wrap up the weekend? Well, uh, closing out of the season for Evangeline Downs is the 16th. We're tackling races 5 through 10. And they got some, uh, they got the Louisiana Futurity there, a million dollars. They got a big, big purse. And we kind of got a couple of long shots in there. So uh, give a look at our selections there on on the Los Angeles website and uh, the, the program in the back. All right, sounds good. Chris, have a good rest of your Thursday afternoon. Uh, let's get ready for a wrap-up of Strong Week in the Rakes in Los Angeles, SoCal Derby on Sunday, and much more to come in the brand new year here at Los uh, Great job as always. Have a good rest of your Thursday. I'll see you this week in Los Angeles. All right, boys, you have a good night. You too. This December, Los Alamitos celebrates its biggest daytime thoroughbred meet of the year. Opening day is Friday, December 8th. The meet will have five stakes races, including three graded stakes events. The Starlet is set for Saturday, December 9th, and the Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 16th, plus the Bayacoa and two other stakes events headline the meet. And horse players, our on-track live money handicapping contest is set for December 16th. It'll be a meet to remember this December at beautiful Los Alamitos. That's right. The daytime season here wraps up this weekend here with a pair of doubleheaders as well. Daytime season runs Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The nighttime year-round quarter horse season wraps up this weekend also with a Saturday night and Sunday night program. Don't forget the NHC Handicapping Contest scheduled for this weekend on the daytime at Los Alamitos. So come on out and uh, compete if you want to earn your seat to Vegas. All the details at Los Alamitos.
Gmail.com. Let's take a look at my play that I like for this Saturday night program. We're going to go to race number four. Race number four, a 350 yard allowance event to wrap up the early pick four. This also begins the $2 pick six on Saturday night. Five to two more. My favorite will be Navaja, who draws the row. She was a Edward Million finalist last season as a two year old, as a three year old. She's had only had five starts with a three third place finishes. She hasn't hit the exact of this season as a three year old. She's going to be the five to two more than a favorite. The horse I like best in the spot is going to be the six horse, the Bonafide, who I believe is the third choice on the morning line. Let me confirm that. Yes, one sweep bar is three to one, the second choice. So I'm going to the third choice, VF Bonafide uh, for Jose Flores, owner Jose Flores, and also part owner. Valley Farm, bred by Valley Farm, and he was my lock of the night back on October 29th, and he narrowly missed by a head, and he was coming off of a significant layoff. He had not raced since December of 2022, and he came back on October 29th, so a few days shy of of uh, Halloween. That was a lengthy layoff for him in that spot, So, but despite all that, I, I liked him in this spot. I made him the lock of the night. I'm going to make him the lock of the night once again here tonight at seven and two let's watch that replay there from um october 29th where he had the rail and again lengthy layoff he was coming back off of this race uh but i thought he had some interesting workouts dating back to the summer i thought he could be ready to go uh the inside post a little bit of concern but i thought he would work out a good trip he worked out a clean trip but you see how he hesitated a little bit of the break um actually broke glass in that field of six and I thought he made up a significant of ground, uh, of ground to only miss by a head. Uh, the angle could be deceiving because uh, it seems like he was always in the mix of things, but he was not. He broke last in that field of five. And let's uh, let's run back here and scrub to this video. We can catch up to where the drone shot. Look right there. He misses by a nose. He's the inside runner. But let's keep it rolling. Let's see if we can. Uh, here it is. Here's the drone. Watch the inside rail here. Hesitates, breaks slow, was last. Uh, last by a little bit compared to the outside runner, but his last nonetheless makes up a significant amount of ground midway into the second half of the race. I would say he made up close to a, close to a length, maybe three quarters to a length in that spot to just narrowly miss by head. He's going to gallop out well with the leaders there as the finish line. So um, I like Via Bonafide. I'm going to make him the lock of the night once again for me in race number four. He's 72 on the morning line. To me, he looked like a runner that – Needed to mature a little bit more compared to his two-year-old season, which he did, I thought, based on the workouts and based on that run last time out. And I'm just hoping tonight it's a little bit more of an alert start moving over to gate number six instead of dealing with the inside post. So race number four will be my lock of the night, 350 yards, allowance. I'm going to the six, BF Bonafide. That's going to wrap it up here for this weekend's preview show. Thank you to Mike Corona and Christopher Wade for their analysis and selections. Thank you to all the viewers who have been watching us all throughout the year. This is going to wrap up the, the weekend, uh, uh, not only daytime third season, but also the nighttime year-round signal. So we're going to take a quick break, just one weekend off before we return with the new nighttime year-round uh, meet coming up on the 30th and 31st. Professor G did send us a video to wrap up some of the things that happened last week here at Los Amigos and also What's to come this weekend for daytime and nighttime at Los Al. Have a good rest of your day and weekend as well. Happy holiday season. Hope to see you out at Los Amigos enjoying some nighttime or daytime racing soon to come. Have a good night. See you next time. Jose, I'm here at Schwanis for a very special celebration here at Los Alamitos. As you know, the Los Alamitos staff gets together for a beautiful meal, a great meal here at Schwanis. And get together with all the people that work here at the bar so that want to come out and enjoy a great meal. All of our staff comes out, uh, including Kathy Monge, our track president. The meal is prepared by Chef Sam Gonzalez and his entire staff. It's a lot of fun, but today is a very special day because it is our closing Thursday here of the meet. Of course, our meet wraps up this weekend. So they're getting together for a real special celebration. They're getting together for uh, to enjoy delicious steak and shrimp, uh, as well as dessert. All the trimmings here at Los Al for this special holiday celebration. And they're having a lot of fun. We're going to give away prizes and a lot more happening here at Schwanis. It's a great time that we enjoy having here with those that work in the barn site here at Los Alamitos. And it happens every other Thursday here at Los Al. 
for today, like I mentioned, a very special celebration. Just wanted to come by and share this little moment with, with you because it's something that is uh, very special here for all of us at Los Alaminos. Thanks, Jose. I wish you were here, my friend. Watch uh, those alamitos when I was small. Before I even wanted to be a jockey, just put the little saddle on the laundry thing and get my saddle and ride. And to win both of these is a dream come true. I really wish my family was here right now with me. Uh, you know, they're the world to me. They're the main thing for me, and I wish they were here. But I'm just blessed to God and for the opportunity. Uh, what happened over there in Pulse? Just talk a little bit about that. So he game. was good, but there was a ruckus. And, uh, he thought we were going, I thought we, the gates had opened. So I kind of pushed him, but I was, well, you saw we were hanging on, so I just tried to hang on. And I let him go. Leaving the gates, he get bumped like two, three times. And it was hard, because that one was with me. And uh, I, I thought he was going to pass me, but he's an amazing horse. He's a blessing from God. He got it done. You complete that huge year that you've had a record and setting it's, in. It's, it's amazing, it's a blessing, like I said. Uh, never thought I was going to be here. I thought I would still be watching them on TV even. I'm just blessed to God. You're here, my friend. Thank you, sir. This December, Los Alamitos celebrates its biggest daytime thoroughbred meet of the year. Opening day is Friday, December 8th. The meet will have five stakes races, including three graded stakes events. The Starlet is set for Saturday, December 9th, and the Los Alamitos Futurity will be held on Saturday, December 16th, plus the Bayacoa and two other stakes events headline the meet. And horse players, our on-track live money handicapping contest is set for December 16th. It'll be a meet to remember this December at beautiful Los Alamitos.